All right, so <laughs> I just got done watching Horns. It was so weird. It was just, um, yeah, it was fucking weird. Okay, it was just dumb, but it was also decent. It was so dumb, but it was amusing. Um, so. This movie was made in 2013, and uh, t- what Netflix call it says is um, accused of murder, Ig Parish. I think the name's terrible, first off. Ig. Um, wakes up one day and finds he's grown a set of horns, compelling people to confess, confess their sins to him. Um, but yeah, that, that's the premise, pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. But uh, basically. Uh, I find it a little humorous. This movie, literally the first words of the movie, which I think is hilarious, is straight up just, are you horny? And I just love, (laughs) that is straight up just like, yeah, they're just like trying to show you that these people are in love and all that. And then the first thing you hear is, are you horny? And I just think that's, that's very amusing. Um, but anyways, uh, so... This movie, yeah, starts off with uh, Ig and this girl uh, laying down, and and he's she, yeah, he's just like, I will love you for the rest of my life. I want you to love me for the rest of my life. That's what she says, and then uh, yeah, then it tr- turns into a next scene of Ig being some alcoholic. He's just drinking himself to death, so you kind of think, oh, he's, a, uh, you know, they probably just split up, you know, something like that, nope, um, then he walks outside to a group of reporters and all that, saying, you fucking maniac, why would you do that, you killed her, and it's just like, okay, <laughs> and, uh, we don't, we don't know jack crap, and apparently he's already used to this, from what it seems like, he's just like, okay, uh, and, yeah, so basically then he just kind of goes, uh, goes to his parents' house, they, uh, chill together, and eat some lunch, then his, uh, reporter buddy comes over, and, um, just tells him, oh, this place burnt down, now, um, now that I think about it, the place burning down, it has nothing to do with the movie, actually. I'm just realizing that. There's this building that burns down, apparently. We don't see the building burn down, and... <sighs> what? <laughs> just, that's confusing to me now, because, okay. I'll try to explain it with no spoilers. Uh, as much as possible, but basically, there was, you know, this building that apparently burns down, and basically how this movie does, shows you what happened prior, is by flashbacks, and by people telling them, uh, there's nothing to do with a different building, it goes straight to it from a diner, to this place, and the po- and the, this place is not the place that burnt down, so I have no clue what the place that burnt down has to do with the story. That makes sense to me, actually. Um, but anyways, yeah. So he comes over, tells him, "Hey, this burnt place burnt down," and he's just like, "Are you freaking kidding me, man? That that was like the one thing that could have." Uh, shown that I was innocent, and, yeah, so he's just like, you know, I know that, that flip it sucks, oh, you know, pretty much stuff like that, and then, uh, I might be missing some things here, but basically after that, they kind of go, he goes to a, a bar, Ig, and then he's, go, he's with this, uh, get some drink from this chick, and apparently this chick has a thing for him because after he's basically he starts drinking 
wakes up in her apartment and he goes into the bathroom notices he's got two bumps on the side of his head and he starts touching it one of them and then literally just a horn just just pops on out of there just explodes out of there and it's kind of cool looking but yeah and so then he goes to a hospital to try to figure out whoa and what's going on and while he's there he just starts kind of having all these people express all these um yeah, just some secrets, basically. Stuff that you would not tell people. Uh, just, you know, like, you know, these people have just, like, show it, tell them all these dark thoughts, like, oh, I fucking hate my daughter. If it was up to me, I'd kill her, or just at least leave my husband and never come back because I hate my daughter so much. Shit like that. Just, like, stuff that you just, uh, you just basically, you know, uh, that you basically just normally won't really, you won't, won't, won't normally say to people. But, yeah. And basically, so he decides he's going to use that to his advantage to um, find out who truly killed his girlfriend. Because, yeah, he basically can just, yeah, sinners or whatever will tell him they're secrets and all that um but yeah so that'll end it right there for the non-spoiler because i just don't really know uh actually here I'll, I'll say a few things um the acting in it for the most part it was pretty good you know there was a few scenes where it was just like ooh, that was pretty gar garbage uh but not too bad uh all of them, most of it was pretty good cgi was pretty good for the most part Every once in a while, there'll be a couple of, like, like, not really bad, per se, but just not good. Uh, but, uh, and I feel like the ending was kind of just, uh, bad, unfortunately. It, um, yeah, there's nothing I can really say that won't be any, uh, spoilers that won't make it so it's not a spoiler basically if it's you know good or bad or anything uh so oh yeah and i like how uh, i like how it's shot you know whenever there is like a kill or whatever in it most of the time it's pretty cool but for the most part some scenes just have some like like some of the killing has some weird scenes that make no sense that are just like what why would they why why like, uh, I'll, I'll say this, there's basically this, he, uh, yeah, basically some snakes become a bigger part in later in the film, uh, but basically the snakes start wrapping up around this guy, and this part's cool, he, there's like a hole in his stomach, and he just blasts through it, you know, cr you know, crawls through it. And that part's pretty cool, but then he starts crawling up to his face, and then goes in his mouth, and then makes the dude swallow him and killing said snake. And the snake is doing this, not, not a person. A person's not make, controlling the snake, making it do it. The snake just decides to crawl inside this guy's mouth to kill himself, basically. And it's just like, what? I was all for it, but before that, it was like okay before that, but then suddenly the snake just commits suicide for some reason. Um, all right then, I guess. Um, but yeah. Other than that, you know, overall the movie was decent. I can't say I would really ever see it again, and I obviously would not buy the film. <laughs> Maybe if I was at like a Dollar Tree. And saw it there, sure. You know, maybe. But, yeah, anyways. Uh, my overall rating for the film. Out of 10, 5 being average. 10 being magnificent, obviously. Just fantastic. 1 being freaking awful. Terrible. Just wasting my life, pretty much. Uh... Oh yeah, and this is also another issue with me, actually. I forgot about this one. 
is that the movie is based all oh, is two hours basically, and I kind of just felt like it, 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 it was too long basically. It felt like fifteen minutes could have been cut out of it, and it would have been it would have been probably better. Um, and there was like five different times when the movie quote unquote looks like it's gonna end. And then it just doesn't. Uh, and it's just, you know, it doesn't, it's not as good as I, you know, would like it to be. But anyways, uh, back to the uh, final review. Uh, my final rating for it will probably be a... Ooh. I think, I think it might be a 6 out of 10, actually. It was in between five out, ten, uh, five out of ten and a six out of ten, but decided yeah six out of ten, slightly below uh, above average. I mean, it's well shot, acting is amusing, and CGI for the most part's pretty good. And you know, uh, oh yeah, and also sorry one more part I forgot um, was at the end the. It's this is a mystery kind of movie, a mystery horror, something kind of like that. It was very obvious. Oh my goodness, honestly, like from the first fifteen minutes of the movie, I was like, I think it's this guy, and I was right. Afterwards, I tried doing some. Never mind. I'm just gonna end. I'll, I'll stop talking there because it will spoil it if you decide to watch the movie. But yeah, if you want to watch it, it's on Netflix. Um, but would I actually recommend you watch it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, if you're kind of like... Schlop, I guess. Just kind of like, just not very good movies. <laughs> if you actually want your movies to be good, then don't. But with me, I kind of, I find it amusing. Finding garbage movies and watching them. Like, I like Son of the Mask. I like that movie. It's great. Why? Because it's shit. But it's great. Um, but anyways. Yeah, so. That'll be it for the non-spoiler. If you want to get spoiled, stick around. Or if you've already seen it, stick around. If you want to watch it, go go watch it and then come back. Yeah. But anyways, so here's the spoilers. Woo! Um, anyways, uh... What was I at? Oh yeah, so he's at the hospital. And... Actually, no, nah, I'll just, I'll just kind of just, like, not even freaking worry about doing that, actually. Because, yeah, then it will just kind of end up with me just... I don't really bring in any interesting... I don't really say anything interesting at this point when I do that kind of stuff. But, I don't know. This is kind of like a trial. I'll try that. And I'll see if I like it more doing it that way. But, anyways, uh, so... Yeah, overall, who is the bad guy? It was the lawyer... Bum, bum, bum. The lawyer, it was so stupid. So the lawyer, there was like this kind of like this uh, thing that kind of prevents him from seeing the horns because apparently he is a good boy. He is a good boy. Immediately that, since he was the only person in the whole movie that was like that, that immediately gave up some just some red flags in my mind. Immediately, I was just like that. That looks like a, uh, you know, something to make it so we are like, okay, you know, that guy's okay. You know, he must be. Uh, he's he's fine. I'll leave him alone then. So, yeah, but I I, I kind of yeah, I kind of yeah, I felt it was obvious for me basically. Uh, sorry, I don't know why it was so damn hard for me to think and think of words, but. The guy was so stupid. You know how dumb he is? Because, basically, the guy, he was originally going to go to prison. And he actually goes to prison once in this movie, again, basically. Because he goes out of, uh, out of just the, you know, the vicinity that he can stay in. And, uh... So yeah, so he gets arrested, and then the lawyer comes over and saves his butt cheeks. Um, but my question is, is if he's the killer, why would he not just be like, I know it's you, 
you know, say, just lie, just say, I think, yeah, it's you, man, okay, I will not help you because I genuinely feel like it's you, okay, I take the plea or whatever, just sit there and just tell him that you're on your own, because then he's going to prison, which will get everyone off of your case, you would be okay then, because you are, you know, you are not telling, uh, Basically, you are making it so that they are going to be looking the other way. They are not going to be looking for you. They never were throughout the whole movie. The cops had no guess it was him. And so, it was just like... You know, it's kind of dumb, dumb. Um, and also, so, we see a whole bunch of flashbacks involving this girl. And with me? I never got interested in her. Admittedly, that's because that's how they filmed it. They shot it like that. We never really saw her in, in, you know, we saw her freaking once. We got to see her before she died when it's, she says, are you horny for the first time? Basically, that's the first words in the whole movie. And so, I it was impossible for me to get interested in her and be like, man, I want to see her get, uh, I, I want, I, yeah, I want to see her get, um, avenged, you know, and the movie tries to make it so you're like, man, fuck that guy, which they do the kind of the, uh, I don't really know if you would call it a trope, but it was an easy play card to make it so you would be like, oh yeah, yeah, no, screw that guy, is that he says that after he killed her, her he rapes her, which actually would not make sense because... That would leave DNA, so that makes no sense. So I don't know if he just said that just to get under Iggy's skin, but all right. Um, but yeah, so he just keeps, he's always on about how he raped her. And sure, it does make me want to see the guy get fucking annihilated. Screw you, then, man. So, but it's just like you know, how many movies have you genuinely seen where the bad guy or the villain or whatever? is like a raper or he raped somebody or he touched somebody you know he did something to somebody that they should not have done and like sexually and so you know, you've seen that a lot in movies but anyways um is yeah i just never i never got interested in her and so i just didn't care that like you know i didn't i never got invested in this her coming back to life well, not coming back to life, I mean, no. <laughs> Getting avenged. And, yeah, so, I got more interested in Iggy, but he was kind of a weird character. And everyone, everyone that has issues, like, that explains stuff to him, it's always, except one character, I think. Two, actually. Nope, nope, one. One. Uh, there was one character that turns out he's he, there, he's gay basically he's a homosexual that's it and uh, that was that's his whole secret that he explains to Iggy um, and everyone else is like I want to fucking kill you I want to kill you and, you know well, not really kill you but kill this person kill this person gut them you know do, just basically kill somebody in some way. Or have sexual intercourse with somebody. Always. There's always... That's it. And so it kind of got a little... A little stupid when... Halfway through the film... This waitress lies and says... Oh... I made up that story about you coming back to the... To the, um... Diner because... He, basically she has him come to a diner... And breaks up with him. And he was going to propose to her right then, basically. And, but yeah, it turns out she loves him so, so, so much. Oh, it's so sweet. But yeah, so she loves him to death. And she wants to marry him. He, she really does. But apparently, the reason why she does not want to is because he, she, uh... Basically, she has cancer, and she doesn't want to put him through that and make it so he has to just keep drop everything to help her and for her to ultimately still pass away. And, 
yeah, he does, she doesn't want him to throw away his his years for her. She doesn't feel like she is worth his time like that. And, uh, yeah, so basically then he freaks out. He, he She didn't tell him that part. She just told him, she told him there's somebody else when there wasn't. She just kind of was trying to make it so she hates him. I mean, he hates her. But, yeah, there's somebody else. I'm going to move to Los Angeles. I've never been with another person except you. How many people have done that? You know, where she's just like, <laughs> this part is so dumb to me. Is she's just like, how many women have you been with? And he's like, you already freaking know that. Just, just you. I've never been with anyone else. And so she, she's like, yeah, yeah, nobody does that. Literally no one in the world. And I'm just like, what? You know, there's a whole religion based upon that, aka uh, Christianity. They say you cannot have intercourse with somebody until you are married to that said person and so basically that would just, basically just kind of sums down to cannot have sex with that person and like well with anyone until you are married to that said person and so basically that means you would only be having sex with one person so i found that a little humorous that she is just like nobody does that fucking millions of people do that but eh um but so, let's <laughs> say that. Um, before the diner, shit. Where was I at? Okay, I had to pause it for a second because I remember now. But so, there's this waitress girl at that diner. That when Iggy storms off, he gets in his car, drives away, freaking out, drinking. <coughs> Sorry about that, but. Uh, I'm not used to talking this much. Uh, I lose my voice every fucking time I do this because I'm not used to talking this much, this fast, often. I kind of just sit there, chill. But, yeah, so he... Uh, yeah, there's this waitress girl out there that served them uh, their food, obviously, and all that. Uh, that... She tells the cops that she saw Iggy come back and say, I'm going to fucking kill you. Come here right now. And then he grabs her, puts her in a car and drives away. And so she, yeah, she lies about that, which that never happened. And at the movie does try to do one of those like, oh, it, possibly Iggy did do it. I never thought that Iggy did it for a second uh, but that's just me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he, uh, yeah, they, she, okay, yeah, so and she starts telling everybody also, she's like, yeah, sometimes I even tell people that I, that you killed her, you killed her right in front of me, and you, you, you fucked her in the ass. Just, that's straight up what she says, it's just like, what? What are you going on about, lady? And she starts going on about how she's going to become so famous. She's going to get on the news and become famous. And she's going to get a boob job to get her boobs looking great. And it was just like, what? What are you talking about? And, uh... Yeah. But I, I didn't like her. She was... I found her annoying. But I got, got some satisfaction after that is... Uh, because apparently... Since... Iggy has the horns. He is kind of like a um, the devil. I don't. I don't really know if that's what you would like to call it. But basically, uh, it basically says that he has a little bit of control over snakes or something like that. Well, no, he crawls around like a snake, something like that. So basically, that somehow means that snakes are controlled by him. Okay, um, but. So he, yeah, he basically goes over to her when she's clocking out, getting out of her job, and has the snakes bite her in multiple places. And he starts telling her how she will never become pretty again, just like how she wanted. And 
Yeah, so she's just sitting there fucking bleeding out. Her whole body's just mauled. And screwed up. Hell yeah. Did I not like her? Yeah. Did I enjoy the scene? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sick fuck, I guess. Um, <laughs> that's my kind of thing. I like, I like gory shit. And this movie has uh, some gory kills. There's a lot of just kind of walking around being like, I didn't do it. And it's just like, yeah, we got that, bro. Is honestly, if you count how many times in this movie they have Iggy say, I didn't, I didn't kill her. I promise I didn't kill her. Is, uh, you, it would be pretty damn high. Uh, cause they, yeah, from the, till the ending, they just constantly are going on about, I didn't kill her, I didn't kill her, which is just like, I know you didn't kill her, man. I'm sick of hearing it, man. I understand you loved her, but I don't care. I want to see the story progress. Is if you just cut out those, half of those scenes, that alone would have taken out 10, 15 minutes. If you got rid of the, I loved her so much, or the, uh, I love, I, yeah, I didn't kill her. Stuff like that, it's just, it would have cut down the time, which would have made the movie, I feel like, better. Um, but, yeah, and so basically you see that, they ha yeah, they have a whole bunch of red herrings, so, first off, they have you make it, you think that it's Iggy, and then it basically tries to kind of make it so you think, oh, it was probably his brother. Because after Iggy drives away, uh, the girl gets in the car with Iggy's brother, and he drives out of there with her. And then while he's in the car with her, he starts being like all fucking weird, being like, "Oh, what what happened with Iggy?" And then he starts trying to like rub her hair, rub her, and all that. Uh, well, not rub, rub her. No, no, like rub her, yeah, shoulder. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but. And starts trying to try to give her drugs and all that shit like that. And yeah, then she's just like, I'm just gonna get out of the car. And he's just like, no, I'm sorry. <sighs> Gets out of the car. She goes to this tree house that's conveniently right there. So damn, she must be lucky. Is that there's this tree house that's like hers and Iggy's tree house in the middle of the forest that Iggy found one night when he was a little kid. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's got like a compartment and all that for their goodies, which will be useful later. Um, but, so yeah, so she basically, yeah, then basically he just like starts freaking out. He starts just chugging alcohol, passes out drunk, basically. And wakes up the next morning with a rock in his hand. And it's just covered in blood, and so is his shirt, and so he's just like, Oh! I killed her! Yeah, and then that's the end of the flashback. Then later in, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much the only red herring that goes to immediately to the killer. Uh, basically, you see that she said that, I, th I, I think I might need help uh, after, yeah, tomorrow at the diner. Because I'm going to be... I have to end uh, things off with Iggy to the lawyer, a.k.a. like Iggy's best friend. But it turns out he always had a crush for her. Which literally in the, the beginning of the film they straight up told you that. So, you know. Okay then. Uh, but yeah, so he basically goes there and then follows them to... The, uh, the forest gets out of the car, sees that the dude's drunk and passed out already. So he goes over, goes to her, and he... Yeah, so he starts, like, freaking telling... Yeah, she... Yeah, basically he starts being like, Oh, we're all alone. So glad that it's just me and you now. I've been waiting for this moment for my whole life. Starts trying to make out with her, and she's like, No! Please go away! Stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, just one thing led to another, and, yeah, he, he grabs a rock, slams her in the head with it, because she didn't love him. And then he grabbed said rock, 
put it in the car with the drunk dude, but put his little blood on the dude's hand and blood on his shirt. So, yeah. Uh, then we fast forward to, yeah, basically, actually, yeah, then Iggy and Lawyer Dude are fighting. They're trying to, you know, uh, yeah, they're basically, they're, yeah, fighting to the death. Lawyer Dude kicks Iggy's ass, throws him in the car, then pours gasoline all over it, lights it on fire, then Iggy's freaking out, trying to get out, and every time he tries to get out, he... Lawyer kicks the door shut, which wouldn't that be kind of a bad way to kill somebody when you're that close to it where you can kick the door shut, shut still? Wouldn't that be a very big danger for you to be, you know, exploded? But, uh, or for the fire just to get big enough where it would, you know you would get burnt or something like that. I don't really, I don't really know. But it's just, you know, you're a little close, buddy. Uh, and he, yeah, so then Iggy turns on the car, which he's able to turn on the car just fine, even though it's covered in fire. And drives into the ocean. Then he, the cop, then the lawyer goes over being like, Iggy told me that he killed her, then he killed himself out of guilt. Then the people just say, okay. They don't go into the water to check and see if the dude's in there. They don't check anything. They're just like, well, take your word for it, buddy. Right, Bye-bye. And they just leave him alone. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty great, right? Um, <clears throat> and basically then... Iggy goes to the hospital for his brother, which I, I didn't tell you before. Iggy goes over after he attacked the diner girl, and he made her, basically he made his brother take a shit ton of drugs and start ODing because he yeah, because he just had you know uh, he started panicking a shit ton after the girl died, and so he uh, yeah. Basically took drugs to make himself feel, feel better and shit like that. And so he made him basically like OD, but he's still alive. Um, which I didn't really, I just, I felt more bad for the dude at that point. Because it's just like, well, I don't know. Because like, sure, he had his own demons. And you're helping him fix said demons of him being a drug addict. But the reasoning of why he said it made no sense to me is you didn't tell the cops, which, yes, in hindsight, sure, that would, could work. But the dude also had some good points of himself, where he, basically, they're brothers, and so the cops and everyone else would take it with a grain of salt. I know if I got told that kind of stuff, I would just be like, I don't know. That's a brother, you know, that's his brother. That dude would be willing to lie. For his brother, you know? And so, you know, I, I understand that. And all he would do is just, you know, get them both in more trouble, I think. But anyways, so... Then he goes to the hospital for his bro to tell his brother. And then the dude's just like, I'm going. He's like, you can't even get out of the hospital. And he's like, well, I'm not going. You're not going without me. And then they go together. And... They go to the uh, girl's dad's house, and they get a key from him for for the uh, treehouse. There we go. God, they get uh, yeah. They get the key for it. They go there, open it up, and basically just says, "Oh, I have cancer." Stuff like that. Just basically the stuff I already told you about. Then, yeah, basically he comes there, uh, but basically what happens whenever you express what you did to the devil or whatever, it's basically to Iggy when he has horns, you won't remember it. You will wake up, basically, basically you will just, yeah, you'll, there'll just be a, basically a splotch in the middle of your day in your memory. You won't remember it at all, basically. 
Uh, and so this dude does not remember. And so they just went there walking together. And then he's just like, I know you killed him. I know you killed her. Admit it. And then he's just like, what, bro? What are you talking about? And eventually he starts kind of uh, admitting it. Then the dude that killed her, the lawyer, starts attacking Iggy. But then a oh, a cop comes up. One of their buddies from the olden days uh, comes over there. He's got a shotgun, aims at him. Then, basically, somehow the lawyer is able to take the gun, shoot the brother in the leg. Then also, while Iggy is trying to pull the gun away from him, shoots the cop in the face. It was pretty fucking gory. It was honestly pretty cool. <laughs> I won't lie. But, um, yeah. Then, oh yeah, because Iggy is wearing a necklace, which basically, okay, actually, here, I'll rewind a little bit. The lawyer was wearing the said necklace. That was the girl's necklace. And he, basically, he, whenever you're wearing that necklace for some reason, you can't see the horns. And so the guy kept being like, what are you talking about horns, bro? You don't got no horns, man. What are you talking about? And, uh, yeah. Eventually he takes the, yeah, the necklace off and he's like, whoa, you got horns, bro. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And so because he now has the necklace, whenever he has it on, he has no more burns from the car fire, Iggy, meaning him. Iggy is no longer... Yeah, he had a whole bunch of burns on him from the car fire, and when he put on the necklace, he heals immediately. It was weird. It's kind of dumb. Then <laughs> <coughs> he... Yeah, so basically, he takes off the necklace. Then he becomes, like, this weird, like, giant devil thing. Well, actually, no, he grows angel wings and flies up for like 10 feet then it catches on fire then comes tumbling down and then turns into a devil then just starts slowly walking towards the dude getting pummeled with shotgun bullets which the shotgun bullets don't bother him but once the dude gets a pitchfork and stabs him with that suddenly oh pitchfork stabby my weakness oh my god uh. And, uh, but he hurries and kills the lawyer, then falls back and dies. Yeah, then they go back to that scene that we saw before. And it turns out they were in heaven at the beginning of the film. So, when she starts telling the dude, are you horny? It turned out that was the end of the movie the whole time it was the ending and yeah that was it it's kind of a dumb ending i think but yeah um god this one was almost 40 minutes long damn um but yeah so yeah that was horns it was pretty good okay it was kind of dumb as well it was dumb but good at the same time it was so dumb that it was good. I guess that was more the correct way of saying it. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, the, I find that humorous is how fast the movie would have been done. It was would have been done just like that if the freaking stupid Iggy just had a brilliant idea of walking around with, you know, maybe his phone... Maybe a tape recorder. Does not matter. Something that could record audio. That's it. Simple, right? Just to go over, over all these people were you, you know, holding your phone and just being like, "Sup? How's it going?" And they're just like, "I want to fucking kill you, bro. I want to stab you right now, right in the butthole, man. Fuck you, man." And it's just like you know, you get all this stuff on your phone on an audio recording and. <laughs> The movie would have been over so quickly, man. You would have been able just to show the cops. Hey, I have this audio recording showing that the waitress alibi story or whatever is bullshit. So, yeah. It was just not... 
Basically, Iggy was being the most biggest dumbass to hit the planet. But, yeah. So, I'll do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, subscribe anyways. I don't give a shit. You gotta subscribe either way, okay? It's not fucking up to you, man. You're doing it. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules around here, man. That's just, it's, it's, if you haven't read the most recent YouTube guidelines, it actually says that you had to subscribe to me, so I'm sorry, but you, you gotta do it. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Alright, bye.